open your books to pages 16 and 17. We're going to learn about coordinates. So coordinates identify location. The two coordinates of latitude and longitude together describe a place's absolute location. When we know the latitude and longitude of a place, we can find exactly where that place is located. So kind of just like those grid maps we did, um, it's very similar to that, except instead of it being like B, A, and then like 1, 2, and stuff like that, these are actually going to be the lines that you're looking at. So um, you're not going to look at the space in between the lines, you're going to look exactly at the lines. So if you look right here, it says the location of point A is 40 degrees north, 120 degrees west. So look at point A. For north, it's 40 degrees because it's right on that line. And for west, it's 120 degrees. And then the point, point B is 50 degrees north, 110 degrees west, 50 degrees north, 110 degrees west. Now these are pretty easy ones. They can get a little bit more difficult um, if they aren't necessarily on the line. So I'm going to give you an example of one just in case you see one pop up somewhere. Plus you can be a little extra smart. So I'm just going to put one right about here and we'll call this point C. I want you guys to do the same. Put it about where mine is. So point C. But well, what we're going to find first is the north or south location. So as we can see, it's going to be in the north, so it's going to be something degrees north. So if I look, it's between 45 and 50. So if it's between 45 and 50, I would say it would be this would be like 46, 47, 48, 49. So I would say it's about at 48. You could say 49. It wouldn't really matter. It's close enough. So I'm going to say it's at 48 degrees north because notice it's between 45 and 50. It's not between 45 and 40. So it's between 45 and 50 and it's closer to the 50 side. So it would be about 48 degrees north. And then if we look at west, it's between 120 and 110. Well, you would think, okay, 120, 121, 122 maybe. But no, this is actually going backwards. So I need to go from 110 to 120. So between 110 and 120, we have 111, 112, 113, etc. until you get to 120. So this one's really close to 120. It's about right there. So I would say a good estimate would be about 118 degrees west. If that's a little confusing, that is A-OK. -okay because this is just taking it to the next step, but I just wanted to point that out to you. You can even practice and do your own and then have an adult check you if you want. So speaking of making it a little bit harder, this is just a small section. You can do it with the entire earth. So this is the entire earth. The reason why it's shaped this way is because um, maps kind of stretch out everything. So this more accurately shows um, a grid of the earth. It says which continent is located at 45 degrees north and 90 degrees west, and I'll show you how we do that. So if you look right here, you need to find your, your um, compass, and you are going to decide which is west, which is east, which is north, and which is south. So of these numbers, you're going to start at the equator. So here's the equator. This is zero degrees. It is not zero degrees north. It is not zero degrees south. It is none of that. It's just zero degrees. When you go up from 0 degrees, it's going to be 30 degrees, so that would be 30 degrees north. I would write the N right there where it belongs, but you won't be able to see it. So this would be 60 degrees north. If you go below the equator, it would be 30 degrees south and 60 degrees south. Now what about the lines in the middle? Well, this is where you have to do a little bit of math. So to do the math, you say, what is halfway between 0 and 30? Well, halfway between 0 and 30 would be 15. So right here would be 15 degrees north. This would also be 15 degrees south. And then between 30 and 60 would be 45 degrees north. So it doesn't really tell you that. Um, you kind of just have to figure it out. So that's why I'm helping you with this first one. And then above 60 um, would be 75 degrees. 
and then the very top would be 90 degrees. So those are those coordinates. And then we need to look at um, the east and west coordinates. Well, you have to take the prime meridian. So this would be the prime meridian right here and right here. It kind of just split it in half. So if you look right here, this way is east, this way is west. So this is zero degrees period, just regular zero degrees. Um, this is 90 degrees east, which means this would be 90 degrees west and 180 degrees west. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. You kind of have to know what comes between all of these things. Um, you can probably just use, um, you can do halfway between, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so right here would be 45 degrees east. You don't really have room to write them all. Um, but that would be 45 degrees east right there, and then 60, and then 75, and then 90. So 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. It would keep going. And then right there we have 180 degrees. So I know this is a bit overwhelming, but I want you to try to do numbers 1 through 5. Um, I started you out. On number one, we'll go ahead and continue with that. So 45 degrees north, 90 degrees west. Well, 45 degrees north, that was a bit of a hard one because we had to label it ourselves. So that would be this horizontal line right here. And then 90 degrees west, we have right here. So you just have to trace them together. Here's your point. So what continent? That would be North America. I want you to try your best on this one. And then when you finish, move on to page 17, countries. Maps and globes show the names and boundaries of countries. You can learn about a country by looking at where it is located. You can see what physical features and other countries it is near. So what country is north of the United States and what country is south of the United States? Go ahead and answer that. And this is the country you live in, the United States. Regions. So many maps and globes show regions. A region is an area with one or more common or shared characteristics. So this gives us our definition to what a region is. Go ahead and underline that. The shared characteristics of a region distinguish it from surrounding areas. Regions are a human feature. People choose the criteria by which regions are defined. Regions can be based on natural physical features or human features such as landforms, climate, population, culture, economics, and more. So you could say there are regions within Clarksville. You could say there are regions within um, Tennessee. You could say there are regions within the United States, regions within the world. There are all sorts of different regions. Like if you say the desert, there are desert regions in Africa, so right around here is a very large desert, so this would be its own region. It would be the desert region. Um, so go ahead and answer what is a region. I want you to say it in your own words, though. And then why would an area of land be divided into two regions instead of just one? I want you to think really hard on that one, answer it, and then go on to POP and answer your questions.